the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the governor of the central bank provides a comprehensive explanation of the nation's current financial status during a special meeting covered for members of parliament. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka cautions that an escalating conflict in the Middle East could impact the exports and hinder petroleum imports to the country. Following a brief rebound yesterday that ended a 12-day losing streak, the Colombo stock market has returned to the negative territory today. And Johnson & Johnson says that it reached an agreement with the plaintiff's lawyer to recommend an additional $1.1 billion to resolve legal actions against its baby powder and other talc products. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A special meeting to appraise the members of Parliament on CBSL duties was held yesterday in Parliament under the patronage of Honourable Mahinda Yapa Abewardana, the Speaker. Members of Parliament, Dr. Nandala Virasingha, members of the Governing Board and the Monetary Policy Board, high officials of the Central Bank, was present at this meeting held. The meeting was held by the Governor of the Central Bank, members of the Governing Body and the Monetary Policy Board, Deputy Governors and in the fulfilment of the legal requirement that the Parliament or a committee should inquire into the duties performed by the Central Bank once in every four months, pursuant to its provisions of Section 80 of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka Act No. 16 of 2023 upon a request made by the Parliament. The Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka pointed out that the inflation in Sri Lanka has been brought down to 5% compared to the existing situation and the policy interest rate has been brought down as well. The Governor further mentioned that it was possible to strengthen the rupee by stabilizing the exchange rate through the strengthening of reserves. He also pointed out that the issues related to stabilizing the country's financial system. He stated that it is a point to note that the banking system in this country was prevented from collapsing, especially in the minds of economic crisis. Moreover, technical matters regarding the measures taken to stabilize the financial system in the country, including the appointment of a financial system monitoring committee by the new Central Bank Act, for the stability of the entire financial system, including the bank system and the non-banking financial system, as the stock market and the insurance sector was clarified. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka warns that a wider war in the Middle Eastern region could affect tea exports and disrupt the imports of petroleum to Sri Lanka. It also notes that such a conflict could reduce the inflow of foreign remittances into the country. Accordingly, the CBSL said that a wider war in the Middle East would impact the merchandise trade of Sri Lanka as the country has major exposure in tea exports to the region. Tea exports to the Middle East are about 46% of total tea exports of Sri Lanka, showing significant exposure to the region, while total exports to Israel range about 2% of the total exports in recent past, dominated by diamond exports, which accounted for around 80% of exports to Israel followed by tea. Meanwhile, the importers from Middle East as a region are dominated by petroleum products we are in last year. Over 90% of crude oil and about 40% of refined petroleum was imported from Middle Eastern countries. It said that a wider war could disrupt the import of crude oil and refined petroleum, increasing the import bill, widening the trade deficit. Moreover, the central bank said that the direct impact of the Israel Gaza war would be mainly on the diamond polishing industry of Sri Lanka. The Middle East is also the largest labor migration destination and the largest source of worker remittances to Sri Lanka, which accounts for 53.7% of total remittances last year. The Sri Lanka-Pakistan Business Council fears that trade relationships between Sri Lanka and Pakistan could be at stake with the country's new visa policy, which needs a clear procedural justification. As Sri Lanka opens its doors to 38 countries under a one-shop visa-free system, the country's closest ally, Pakistan, has been chopped out of the list, creating a complex situation for the trade relationship between the two countries. Currently, visitors from Pakistan, be it investors or tourists, have been compelled to follow the traditional procedure following Sri Lanka's recent failed adoption of an online visa system after court ruling. Until then, travellers from Pakistan to Sri Lanka had a more friendly and convenient procedure to follow while obtaining a visit or business visa, but with the abolishment of the online system, authorities have failed to advise or explain on the proper process to follow or adopt. Historically, Pakistan has been Sri Lanka's ally in many situations as regional neighbours. Pakistan has aided the country during three-decade-long civil war and even in the recent past when Sri Lanka faced a major shortage of fertilizers, the Pakistan government willfully released from its own buffer stock to help their neighbour. 
A government statement said that Sri Lanka will give its Coconut Development Authority powers to regulate the quality of imported edible oils such as coconut and palm oil. Minister of Plantations, Minister Mahinda Amaravira said his proposal to empower the CDA received cabinet approval. He added that this was to protect the coconut oil industry in Sri Lanka, to ascertain the quality of coconut oil produced in the country and to regulate the quality of imported oil. Concerns have been raised that coconut oil has been adulterated with other edible oils imported into Sri Lanka and sent to the market. Sri Lanka has no mechanism to confirm the quality of imported coconut oil and other edible oils or coconut oil produced locally. The cabinet paper was presented with observations for several ministries, including the Minister of Agriculture and Plantation Industry, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Trade, Commerce and Food Safety, Minister of Industry and Consumer Protection Authority. The statement said that out of 240,000 metric ton annual consumption of coconut oil in the country, 40,000 metric tons are produced locally while the rest is mixed with substitute oil and released to the market as coconut oil. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. After rebounding yesterday, ending a 12-day losing streak with the return of bargain hunters, the Colombo stock market slipped back into negative territory today. Both indices closed in the red, dampening hopes for a sustained positive momentum. To gain the insights of today's market session, we connect Nagusan Balashadran from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a negative note, continuing the downward streak brought on by poor sentiment caused by election uncertainty, mainly due to high levels of selling during the trading session. The market ended at 10,801 points, marking a 35.9 point decrease from the previous session with a turnover of 1.5 billion rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a downward movement of 3.74 points to end the day at 3,041 3 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers and crossing, record on Hamas Holdings PLC, Hatton National Bank, John Q's Holdings and Dialogue PLC. The top 5 gainers for the day were Radiant Gems International, UB Finance, Samsung International, Paragon Ceylon, Union Chemicals. The top 5 losers for the day were Standard Capital, Milan Developments, Eastern Merchants, Muller and Phipps and East West Properties PLC. The outstanding debt profile of GOSL increased from $96.2 billion in December last year to $100.6 billion by the end of the first half of this year. What contributed towards the increase in outstanding debt during this period? We are joined by Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings to provide us an analysis. The publication of the quarterly debt bulletin for the second quarter of 2024 shows significant changes in the debt profile to, for December 23 last year and June 24, the second quarter of this year. So total debt increased from US dollars 96,170 million in December to US dollars 100,646 million in June 2024 this year, reflecting an overall rise of 4.65%. And the largest contributor to this increase was domestic debt, which grew from dollars fifty-two thousand six hundred and forty-two million to dollars fifty-seven thousand four hundred and eighty-six million, an increase of approximately nine point two percent. And this rise was mainly due to rupee-denominated debt, while foreign exchange-denominated debt remained constant. And external debt also saw a slight increase, growing by zero point five three percent from 37,342 million in December 2023 to 37,542 million in June 24. And within external debt, a large component was bilateral loans, which decreased, which decreased slightly by 1.75 percent from dollars 10,814 million in December 23 to dollars 10,625 million in June 24. And the total bilateral debt accounted for around 28% of total external debt, to which around 39.4% of total bilateral debt is owned, owed to the Exim Bank of China. 
And in contrast, the multilateral debt saw some growth as a result of the restarting of project loans that are funded by multilateral agencies. And finally, when comparing the total debt between March 2024 and June 2024, the increase was a modest 0.25%, showing a gradual stabilization in debt accumulation after a more significant rise earlier in the year. Gold rose today after recent data raised bets for a supersized Federal Reserve interest rate cut this month, but caution ahead of U.S. payrolls data capped further gains. Spot Gold advanced 0.5% to $2,506 per ounce. U.S. Gold Futures firm 0.4% to $2,536.10. Data overnight showed that U.S. job openings dropped to a three-and-a-half-year low in July, but the reduction on its own is probably not enough to warrant a half-percentage point rate cut by the Fed. Traders raised the odds of a 50-basis point cut to 45% from 38%, according to the CME FedWatch tool. Focus is on non-farm payrolls report due tomorrow. Oil prices firm today, edging up from multi-month lows on a possible delay to output increases by OPEC plus producers and a decline in U.S. inventories through the gains were capped by persisting demand concerns. Brent crude for November rose 42 cents or 0.6 percent to $73.12 a barrel after touching its lowest since December yesterday. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude for October was up 37% or 0.5% at $69.57. Further support came from discussions between the organizations of petroleum exporting countries and allies led by Russia, known collectively as OPEC+, about delaying output increases due to start in next month. OPEC Plus had been ready to proceed with an output increase of 180,000 barrels per day next month, part of plans for a gradual unwinding of its most recent cuts of 2.2 million barrels per day. The Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened against the US dollar today as reported by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The buying rate for the US dollar has decreased from 294 rupees and 48 cents to 294 rupees and 36 cents and the selling rate has fallen from 303 rupees and 70 cents to 303 rupees and 59 cents. Now we look at the exchange rates of the rupee against other global currencies. A short commercial break now. Corporate updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Commercial Bank of Ceylon is offering enticing concessions for students making payments to foreign universities over the next three months. They provide education loan facilities with flexible terms for both employed and unemployed students, covering both local and international education. The bank has announced significant benefits for Sri Lankans pursuing education abroad. Until the 30th of November 2024, it will halve telegraphic transfer changes for new student files and cut educational loan interest rates by 0.5%. Students choosing commercial bank for their overseas payments will also receive a union pay international debit card at no extra cost, simplifying transactions abroad. Additionally, they'll enjoy streamlined procedures and access to the bank's extensive international network. These loans offer extended repayment terms, competitive rates and a two-year grace period for interest-only payments before starting capital repayments. The bank emphasizes its capability for seamless borderless transfers, making it an ideal partner for international education. The bank is a leader in digital innovation in the country's banking sector, operates a strategically located network of branches and 966 automated machines island-wide, and has the widest international footprint 
footprint among Sri Lankan banks, with 20 outlets in Bangladesh, a microfinance company in Myanmar and a fully-fledged Tier 1 bank in the Maldives. In a bold move to boost operational efficiency and support aggression expansion while upholding high standards, Barista has officially inaugurated its new state-of-the-art facility, the Happiness Hub in Paliagota. This cutting-edge facility will centralize procurement, food preparation, storage and distribution for Barista's extensive cafe network. Barista celebrated the grand opening of its new Happiness Hub, attended by directors Hiran Embuldenia and Nath Kottegoda, CEO Dilupa Pathirana and head of his team, along with staff from across the company's cafes. The state-of-the-art facility aims to standardize taste and quality across Barista's 41 cafes by centralizing production. This approach will streamline processes, reduce costs through bulk purchasing and enhance supply chain efficiency. Stringent quality control measures are in place to ensure food safety and high preparation standards. Located strategically near the highway entrance, the Happiness Hub facilitates efficient inventory management and quicker supply deliveries. Its design enhances logistical operations, maintains food hygiene and reduces waste through optimized ingredient use and bulk preparation. In addition, the facility features a training school for aspiring kitchen staff, offering essential skills in food preparation, logistics and cafe management. Operated by a dedicated team of coffee enthusiasts, the Happiness Hub is set to expand as Barista's network grows. Looking ahead, Barista plans to expand the Happiness Hub in tandem with its growing cafe network, further enhancing its ability to deliver exceptional quality and service across Sri Lanka and beyond. Demo has announced a strategic partnership with Nations Trust Bank to enhance its capital advisory services for pre-owned luxury vehicle buyers and sellers. The Capital Buy Demo Certified Program now offers expert consultations on market value, transaction security and reinvestment options. This collaboration strengthens Capital's reinvestment offerings, providing various financial solutions tailored to luxury vehicle ownership. Nations Trust Bank will offer comprehensive financial services, including preferential leasing rates, expedited processing and personalized financial options. These include up to 50% residual value at the last rent preferential rebates for early termination and customized payment plans to fit clients' cash flows. Dialogue Exeata PLC has announced exclusive collaboration between its premier loyalty program Dialogue Club Vision and Cinnamon Hotels, designed to offer members exceptional dining experiences as well as fitness and wellness retreats. As part of this partnership, Dialogue Club Vision members can enjoy tiered discounts of up to 20% off on all food, beverages and wellness services across various outlets at Cinnamon Hotels. These offers are available at Cinnamon Grand's Plates Lagoon, Cheers Pub, Breeze Bar, Nugagama, Tea Lounge, London Grill, Nija Wellness as well as the Cinnamon Lakeside's Dining Room, Royal Thai, Long Femme, Columbar and Pool Bar and Bistro and Cinnamon Red's Flavors and Cloud Red. The partnership extends beyond dining to offer a wide range of wellness services at Cinnamon Grand's Nija Wellness. Club Vision members can indulge in rejuvenating massages, revitalizing facials, calming yoga sessions and personalized fitness experiences designed to enhance relaxation and promote overall well-being, providing a serene environment where guests can find their inner balance and escape the stresses of daily life. Excitement surrounds this collaboration as Dialogue Asiata and Cinnamon Hotels are committed to continuously enhancing the value of Club Vision members. Excitement surrounds this collaboration as Dialogue Asiata and Cinnamon Hotels are committed to continuously enhancing the value provided to Club Vision members. As this partnership evolves, members can look forward to even more exclusive privileges and personalized experiences, enriching their journey with meaningful rewards and unforgettable moments.
HDFC Bank has proudly relaunched its corporate website, now offering an enhanced user experience with a fresh, innovative design. The revamped site features easy navigation, trilingual functionality and a mobile responsive layout for seamless access across all devices. New accessibility options including adjustable font sizes, color contrasts and screen reader compatibility ensures inclusivity for all users. This launch marking HDFC's 40 years of service reflects the bank's steadfast commitment to exceptional customer service and innovation. The website also offers integrated online banking functionality, setting a new standard for user convenience within the Sri Lankan banking landscape. Let's take a short break now. Global updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian shares were subdued today with Japanese stocks sliding to their lowest in three weeks as investors sought safety, pushing the yen to a one-month high while U.S. economic worries boosted prospects for the Federal Reserve to cut rates. Amid the fragile sentiment, Japan's benchmark Nikkei slid more than 1% to its lowest in three weeks, while stocks in tech-heavy Taiwan and South Korean stood slightly higher on the day, giving up earlier gains. The MSCI's broadest index of Asia-specific shares outside Japan was up 0.25%, subdued after having tumbled nearly 3% during a three-day losing streak. The index had risen more than 0.6% but gave up those gains. On Wall Street yesterday, the Dow saw a modest gain, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq experienced a slight dip on the second trading day of the month. Historically, September has been a challenging month for equities, so it's not unusual to see some volatility during this period. U.S. stocks closed mostly lower in choppy trading on Wednesday, following data that showed more weakness in the U.S. labor market. The Dow ticked up marginally, while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq both ended slightly down. A report from the Labor Department showed job openings fell to a three-and-a-half-year low in July, likely strengthening the case for an interest rate cut from the Federal Reserve after its policy meeting later this month. This comes ahead of August's non-farm payrolls, released Friday, which is also expected to show further cooling of the labor market. Stocks on the move included NVIDIA, down more than 1.5 percent, a day after a roughly 10 percent drop. The U.S. Justice Department sent a subpoena to the AI chip firm as it deepens its probe into the company's antitrust practices, according to a report. Fellow chipmaker Advanced Micro Devices rose nearly 3 percent after it named a former NVIDIA executive as senior vice president of global AI markets. Stocks of other tech firms, including Apple and Amazon, slipped, while Tesla shares rose more than 4 percent. One non-tech stock of note, Dollar Tree, which plummeted more than 22 percent after the discount store operator trimmed its annual sales and profit forecasts. Johnson & Johnson said it reached an agreement with a plaintiff's lawyer representing 12,000 clients to recommend an additional $1.1 billion to resolve legal actions against its baby powder and other talc products. Johnson & Johnson is adding $1.1 billion to a proposed settlement over claims its talc products caused cancer. That boosts the overall package to more than $9 billion paid over 25 years. J&J continues to say its baby powder and other products did not pose any risk, but it faces lawsuits from over 62,000 plaintiffs, or 100,000 when counting those who haven't yet sued. The healthcare giant is preparing to have a subsidiary declare bankruptcy as part of the settlement, while the company itself continues operating. Now the latest offer has been supported by one lawyer representing 12,000 claimants. Other groups have already expressed support for the existing package. J&J &J says that should give it the backing of more than 75% of claimants, the threshold required for it to win court approval for the bankruptcy settlement. However, lawyers representing some plaintiffs remain vigorously opposed and are locked in a bitter battle with the company. 
With that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow with latest happenings across the business world. Until then, I am Sonia Mudan Naika. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.